Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Building Your Brand Story session. Um, very, very, well, I almost said good morning because it's in Australia, it's the morning, but I don't know where you are. How about you tell me in the chat, where are you from? While we're waiting for people to join us, tell us, tell us where you're from. I'd love to know. I am in the lovely city of Melbourne, which unfortunately happens to be also a bit of a hotspot at the moment. So as of today, we're going on full time masks. But please in the chat, let us know where you are. So uh, while we're waiting for people to join us, oh, there's another Melbourne person. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Texas, love Texas. Another Melbourne person, oh, California. LA, San Francisco, Beaverton in Oregon, yay masks. Very cool, San Francisco. Brilliant, all right. Well, wonderful, thank you for coming along. Oh, Mexico City, very cool. Um, today, we're gonna to be really talking about brand story. And so before we begin, and before I sort of begin my session, it would be really helpful to know where you're at in terms of what you're looking around brand story. What's most important for you around brand story? What, what do you feel are the key elements you really want to get out today and what's particularly relevant in this moment in time? Give me, give me a sense of where you're at again in the chat. Authentic, yes, really important. Anything else? We were discussing uh, with my colleague just a little bit earlier that uh, signal to noise is a little bit trickier now with uh, everything going on. In the US, there's elections. In Australia, there's oil. Well, everywhere, there's COVID. Uh, make more consciousness of what I bring to the table. Oh, yep, yeah, cool. Brand ambassadors, also a really interesting one. Any other thoughts? Clear story? Yep, we can talk to that. Uh, not confusing. Personal branding. Yes, very much uh, important factor today. Uh, somebody's not seeing anything in the chat. I'm not sure how to fix that. I'm really, really sorry. Um, oh, I think it's what some people are doing is they're doing a chat to all panelists. So there's a, if you see down the bottom right hand corner, it says all panelists um, that you can click on that and it says all panelists and attendees and that way other people can see your response. So for those people who are doing just the panelists that wanna share with the group, um, you'll need to switch to all panelists and attendees. So that's just a bit of a heads up. Great, all right. Look, I might sort of quickly kick in and just uh, make sure we keep moving. I want to make sure that you're getting as much information as possible. But I also want to make sure that you're getting value and that if you have any confusion that you let me know. So I'm going to encourage you to ask questions uh, in the chat and then as much as possible, I'll incorporate that into the conversation so that uh, we're, we're maintaining, uh, you know, everything that you're, need, you're wanting and needing from today's session. Uh, creating a brand from scratch, we can definitely do that. Growing worldwide, that's interesting. Uh, important to build yourself into your company's brand story. I, I think so, it's a short answer, but we'll definitely be talking about that a little bit later on. I think more now than ever, there's a lot of noise out there and there's a lot of distraction. And our ability to build our personal brand and our organizational brand amongst that distraction becomes actually even more important now than ever. And so we don't want to be just shouting from the rooftops with a megaphone, our general conversation, our general position, our general message. I think it becomes really, really important now to create some sort of distinction or factor in there that rises above that and brings people together. And so I've got some examples a little bit later about how that specifically happens. But I think it's really important more than now to make sure you create a distinctive element in your messaging and a distinctive element in your story in where your brand needs to go. Because otherwise it just ends up being another story. It's like kind of like walking into a library. There's a thousand books, but which one are you going to pick up? And dare I say it, where they say you can't tell a book by its cover, you actually can in times where there's high degrees of distraction. And so these are some of the elements that I really want to pack into today. Some of you came um, from uh, 
some of you come from a previous session. Most of you have not. So there's a little bit of a recap here, um, but hopefully it's great reinforcing in terms of where they're going. Um, I just noticed Diane's on the, hi Diane, good to see you again. Um, very much part of today's session is, is including um, elements of all I've just discussed and a little bit more. So I'm just gonna start the screen share. So if you can't see the slides, just let me know in chat, but I'm gonna assume that worked. So today we're really gonna be talking about building a brand story from ground up. What are the core elements that, that make your message clear, that make your message distinctive, that create engagement or empathy, and then that, that continue to create a sense of place and a sense of belonging over and on top of what you wanna share. Because if we're missing any one piece of those elements, I feel that then you, you, it becomes the weakest link of, of a very integral uh, strategy that makes you or enables you to move your conversation forward. So let's just get into this. As I just mentioned, we've got a distracting environment even more now as we're moving online because it's so easy when we're in a session to check your phone, to type into your keyboard, to, to see what's going on in the background, which never happened before. And so now more than ever, our ability to connect, our ability to engage, our ability to hold the tension becomes a critical factor in terms of how people perceive us, but also the value we create and, and, and the impact with, that we ultimately produce when we're communicating. And so now more than ever, if we're mindful of that, I think it gives us a distinct advantage from a talking head on a video and hopefully that's not the case today. Hopefully you'll get something a little bit more than that, but they're the things that we're having to contend with that didn't exist, for instance, in a private room or private conversation or even on stage for those people that do stage work. Great communication essence, when you boil it down, I don't care whether it's written or verbal, really comes down to two short things. Relevance, which is the things you need to share, the content you need to share and engagement. And that's the ability to hold someone's attention. At one end, the relevance end, it's typically and classically the domain of teachers, lecturers, and experts. Um, but any, any of those endeavors, they're not specifically memorable. Uh, if you think about your school, how much do you remember of every given lesson? And that's not a criticism of education. It's a criticism of the purpose of the school. The purpose of the school is to educate you to a degree within a certain time that when they give you a test, you can answer it, that you've actually absorbed the information. Once you've achieved that, then they can build other things. Now, when it comes to influence outside that, where you need to build that narrative, where you build, need to build that story, the ongoing conversation then becomes a priority. And so the skills required to do that typically are in the domain of the engagement end. And that typically is in the domain of say, um, performing arts. So actors, musicians, comedians, exceptional at holding people's attention. Their professional responsibility, however, finishes the moment their gig finishes. The end of the movie, the end of the play, the end of the reading, whatever it happens to be. And then they can go on their merry way. And so um, the elements that we need to be mindful of is you can be highly entertaining, but if you're not adding any value, then you won't have a continuing relationship. And so it's the blending of that conversation that then becomes the critical piece. And so where I didn't do in our last session that I really want to emphasize today is when we're talking about relevance, what's the timing? You know, is this the best possible time to share that information or are they distracted? What is that unique and distinctive element over and above information transfer? And I, I think that becomes really, really important for the long longevity of your message. Um, is it specific and clear? Now in virtual, I think you need to be a little bit more careful about how clear you are. And I, because you can't rely on the full body language, you can't, re, the, the speaker can't rely on seeing your faces and seeing whether you're understanding or perceiving. So there's a little bit of a gap. There's a little bit of a distance that we need to be mindful of in a virtual space in particular. Now, whether this is presenting kind of like what I am or a meeting where you're trying to connect, those become then more important factors. And more important is what is in the mind despite that. You know, are, they, are they affected by COVID? Um, are they affected by a tweet that's happening on their phone or a WhatsApp message? You know, these sorts of things then become easier distractions in a virtual space than you would see 
in a face-to-face -face communication. Hopefully no one's doing their WhatsApp chat in the middle of having a personal conversation with you. At the other end of the spectrum, you know, in terms of the engagement, that remarkable element, how do you have that strong position? How do you create that disproportionate amount of attention so it maintains their attention? And we're gonna be talking about how you design for that in a moment, um, because th those then become critical elements over on top of what are you actually gonna say? So let's keep moving. In my world, when it comes to storytelling in particular, there's three core pieces. The first one is the content itself. What are you gonna say? How do you define it? How do you clarify it? What are the components? And what order do you share it become really important pieces. And if you get them out of order, or if you're not clear in your head, then it gets a bit confusing for your audience. And I think it's really, really important that you've got to almost be 150% clear in your head so it gets to at least 90% clear in their head. And so you know, the, the better chance you can give to do that, the better off you are. The next one is the context. Now the context might be the medium you're sharing the message on. You know, the way you share a message over email versus say Zoom, versus an adver a, a standard branding advertisement, say a, a meeting face-to-face -face, or even a stage, the context determines how you approach the messaging, but also, the way that messaging is delivered. So context, context can make a real difference in terms of how people uh, even receive your message. I was, um, this was last year, I was presenting in a room that wasn't very soundproof and across the road was uh, an emergency service, it was a fire engine uh, uh, station, fire station. And there must have been something going on because literally every five minutes a new a new, a new fire engine with sirens was going. It was almost impossible to keep people's attention. So space can make a difference. And even time of day, like Monday morning is easier to have a conversation with someone than 4.55 on a Friday afternoon. So, you know, context can also be time, you know. Context can also be distractions. You know, I'm in a room, I'm at home like everyone else during lockdown. How do you stop people walking through the room? And, be, and, and in my space, that's really important. But also in your space, you also don't want to be distracted. So we can't predict these elements. And so therefore, our ability to hold attention, our ability to have a clear message then become more important. And the final one, I think the one that gets missed the most is the intention. In, in other words, do people trust you? Have you been able to build rapport? Do they understand you? And why are they there? And why should they listen to you? And in my case, it began way back in 1990. I was an IT person. I was trying to convince someone that, that Y2K is a thing. Now, I, I'm fully aware that some people probably aren't even old enough to remember what a Y2K is, but it was the millennium bug where, in theory, all the computers, if they malfunction because they didn't understand a date, might have imploded. And look, that was a clear and present issue, especially for things where they were mission critical, hospitals, um, you know, airlines, you know, uh, even business deals where, where, where things would be triggered on times and, and dates um, became really, really important. And I spent five years fixing that problem, but back then no one really took it seriously. And so the only way that I got to get a conversation with a CEO was a corridor conversation, 90 seconds or less. And so I built this little framework of which this is part, this, this little model that allows people to understand that framework so that you're able to build intention with people from their point of view. And that's the most important part. If, if it's not from their point of view, then the message could potentially be lost. It might be clear in their head, but if they're distracted, it might not land. Uh, if they don't see the world the same way, it might not land. If they have a different opinion about you or your message or your brand, it might not land the same way. And so our intention needs to be seen as pure. And if they don't trust our intention, Arguably, it doesn't matter what the content is. It doesn't matter what the context is because they're not going to listen in the first place. And I think there's a lot of um, opportunity lost if we don't establish that intention really, really clearly. And so um, I really want to talk to you specifically about this today and something what I call the intention architecture because that's the groundwork for all great, uh, I think, not only storytelling, but in authenticity, branding, connection, individual rapport, all the elements that also then become part of that branding uh, brand story in a way that's both meaningful 
and engaging. And so these are the sorts of things that I'm constantly focused on. Uh, and, and I want to give you a glimpse of that today. Now, typically, uh, it takes longer than what we're doing, but it, it's about mastery, mastery of your content, mastery of the delivery, but also master of yourself. How well do you know how to respond to distractions? How do you know when, how do you maintain your presence so that you know when someone else is distracted? These become factors that part of the communication that you can focus on when you have that clarity and when you have that mastery um, of yourself. And so these are the sorts of elements I'm constantly focused on in terms of the story overall. And so a lot of thinking goes into that. <clears throat> these are all the elements. Now, if I had 26 hours, these would be all the tools I'd play with. Now, clearly we don't have that today, but I wanna give you a glimpse of what I think is one, one of the core pieces to that. And I've already mentioned already the intention architecture. If we don't have that clear intention, it's very, very hard for people to follow the message because there's no foundation, there's no scaffolding for which they can build their idea. So let's unpack that a little bit more. Now, even with the intention architecture, uh, when I work with senior executives, it's three days. So, but I know I can get the core of it down right now. So let's start with that and we'll go from there. The first one is really the environment. Now, I already mentioned aspects of environment. COVID's a classic example where there are things that are distracting to people that are more important than maybe the message in the room. And so we've got to be able to factor those in and, and draw people in. Now, people or brands that do particularly well in an environmental space um, have a strong position and they create a disproportionate amount of attention. And it's those two elements together that create the long-term value. Now, if one of those is missing, you're, you're, you have to react a little bit more. So if you, want to, if you want to have a strong position in the environment, those are the two factors. So when I think of that, I think about brands like Apple. They've always had a very strong position about who their community is, and they've had a very strong uh, position about the aesthetic, the design, and the experience you have when using Apple products. And whether you're buying an iPad or a MacBook, um, and, and you know, maybe an iPhone, any of their other products, it always has those two core elements. And that's why they have what they call an attachment rate. If you have a MacBook, the odds of you having an iPhone is pretty high. The odds of you having an iPad is pretty high because the ecosystem they've built and the experience they've built through that is, is based on those two elements, the strong position and the disproportionate amount of attention. That gets you in the door and then allows further things to happen. And that further thing is really around how they relate to your brand as an organization. Now, if you're working for yourself, we'll talk about that in a second. But as an organization, when I say Apple, you have a different visceral experience to them compared to, say, Dell computers. And the reason for that is because Apple has spent many, many years cultivated their brand experience. Now, the other examples I can think of is uh, Four Seasons Hotels or W Hotels. They do a really great job. So does Disney. You know, I mean, the vision to create a Disneyland when no one else was doing it you know, way back when, a theme park, no less, was just incredible and, and unique. And so these are the sorts of things that, that create the brand experience over and above the product that they're producing. And these sorts of things then become integral to the message over the long term. It's like building the foundation by which you can add more value, add more experience, add more quality, add anything else that you feel is relevant because the organization is then um, the centerpiece, or sorry, sorry, a key piece, sorry, not centerpiece, a key piece for how people might see you moving forward. And certain brands, you know, are in a good place there and certain ones aren't. Now, Nike is a classic example where 20 years ago, they weren't seen in a favorable light. Today, they're seen in a much more favorable light. And so it can be shifted, but that takes time. And so these are the sorts of things you need to be mindful of. Next up is the individual level. This is where personal brand then becomes critical. So personal brand is your ability to create the distinctive element. Now, when you're in an organization, I'm sure there's someone in your team that's known for something. Let's have a think about that. Now, that is because they're creating their own personal brand within their organization. If you are a solo person running your own business, or just trying to build your own personal brand, are you known for your product? Or are you known for your distinctive element? 
or are you known for something above that? Now, when I say above that, is typically something that's visceral to the experience of the receiver of the message or the product or service. So it's not transactional at that time, at that point, it's relational. What's the experience your value add over on top of this is what we do. And if you think about that, have a think about, for instance, your favorite teacher or when you've got really good service at a restaurant, you know, those people distinguish themselves over and above their brand, their organization, and they individually created a visceral experience with you. And that's the critical element when it comes to personal brand, even organizational brand, but personal brand, because then you become representative of that space, of that message in that space. And so personal brand then becomes really, really important, whether you're working within an organization or for yourself. And so I think it plays an integral role, not a separate role to your message, which is actually the next part. The message is the bit people ultimately hear. Now that typically consumes the majority of your communication time, obviously, but it doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, a lesson or a lecture at someone. You know, no one needs a lesson or lecture. If someone's looking for information in the lesson lesser sort of format, in reality, um, you know, go put it on the internet. You know, it scales, you know, it reaches anyone in any time zone. They can access it whenever they need. You know, you can do it in your own time, you know. And so the message, while critical, is not always the reason people come. You know, people go to the movies knowing that's pure fiction, but they were, are looking for experience. They're looking for escapism. They just happen to like certain genres. They happen to like certain movies or certain actors or certain movie series like Marvel. Um, but the, the, the fact is they're looking for a fantasy. They're looking for an imaginative piece, an escapism piece. And so that's what movies create. And so I think that's what, exactly what uh, Walt Disney was doing when he was creating Disneyland. You know, you could only create a movie and then disappear. But Disneyland, you could go back over and over and over again between the movies. And this is the experience or the customer experience or the brand experience or the user experience or anything else around experience where the message again becomes integral. And so these sorts of elements then become part of a bigger picture, but also unified in a specific way. Because if they don't trust you as an individual, it doesn't matter what your message is. If they don't trust your organization, it doesn't matter what your message is. And if they don't trust your industry, it doesn't matter what your message is. In Australia at the moment, there's a Royal Commission, which is basically an investigation into our banks. We have four major banks that control like 70 to 90% of the dollars that move around our country. And at the moment, they're not in a very good place because, they're, because of this investigation, this Royal Commission. So it doesn't matter what part or role you play within the banking industry. Everyone is kind of painted with the same light until they build that trust and rapport again. And so that then becomes a mission over and above, over and above the message. And then the last piece, the critical, well, core piece is the audience itself. You know, who are they? What are they looking for? What value can they, uh, are they expecting? Um, what is distracting them? What's important? What's their priority? How do they make their decisions? What would influence them? Who influences them to make their decisions? These then become critical pieces that you need to consider over and on top of what are you going to say? And I think when it comes to messaging, a lot of people stop at what are you going to say? And I think that's a lost opportunity again, because your ability to build that visceral, intimate experience where it feels like it's tailored specifically for them, then becomes part of the overall experience of how people perceive things. Now, you don't need to do it in that order, but I did it from top to bottom because it's easy to go from big picture down to details of individuals. Now, in different scenarios, you might come in at different levels. For instance, if you're in a meeting, then that, what's the meeting about? It's about the message. What's my involvement? That's the individual. Who else is in the room? That's the audience. What's the reason we're coming together? That's the environment. So these are other factors that we're always considering, but you've always got to consider all five. And the reason is if you don't, you create a gap. And if there's a gap, there's doubt or confusion. And if there's doubt or confusion, 
the answer is almost always conservative or no. It's kind of like me saying, I'm going to give you a brand new car, but there's a one in 10,000 chance that the brakes are going to totally and absolutely fail. How confident would you be in the car? And so we can't create those gaps. And in my experience, when you say at least one sentence in each of these five levels, you minimize the probability of gaps being formed or tangent discussions being created in their mind about your real intent. And so these become then integral parts of your conversation over on top of or included with the message you're sharing. So we're going to do a bit of a workshop now. We're actually going to start from the bottom up now. So I'm, because, I, like I said, we typically spend two to three days on this, we're going to do a short version. I'm going to give you maybe five minutes. I want you to write two things in each of those levels, but we're going to start from the bottom. So two things you know about your audience and what's important to them. Two things that you want to say to them. Two things about um, your qualification, your background, your ex experience, or why, why you feel this important. Um, two things about your organization. If you work for an organization, if you don't work for an organization, you can skip that part. And then two things about why you coming together. Is it a random encounter? Is it a formal meeting? Um, is it a sales opportunity? You know, what's the nature of the interaction? So have a think about that in that order. I want you to write down two things. And then we're going to create a micro story around that. And I'm going to ask for volunteers around that. So I'm going to give you about five minutes from now, write down two of those things, two things in each of those levels, just for your reference. Um, if you've got any questions about what I just said, put it in the chat, but I'm going to give you five minutes now just to write something down so that you can create your own brand story, your own narrative uh, for yourself. So we'll start with that. So someone asked for a recap. Was that, I'm just not completely understanding, uh, with Lisa, I think. Um, did you want a recap of the level definitions? Or I'm not sure. Can you please clarify? Ah, so the two things you're writing out are two things in each of those levels. So two things about your audience. Two things you want to say to them. Two things about yourself, two things about your organization, and two, th two things about why you've come together. M Ruiz, I did get your message, so I'll, I'll I'll keep a I'll keep that in mind. But let's I'll just give give everyone a time to uh, complete their messaging. Carolina, yes, it could be anything you like. I want you to understand how to use the tool and the model today. You can insert any content you like as necessary for any given day or whatever.
Okay, about one more minute. Don't worry if you haven't completed this. Okay, I might just uh, stop you all today. Uh, stop you all there, sorry. Um, don't worry if you haven't finished. Sometimes it takes a little bit of thinking. Sometimes when you get an idea, it just keeps flowing out. I get that. Um, the reason I restricted it to two minutes is just so the exercise is relatively short so that you can see how to use the tool. Uh, when you are doing this by yourself, clearly you don't limit yourself to two things. You can just kind of write down as much as you like. So, um, I uh, see that uh, Emma Wiz has already volunteered some content, so I might start with that one and then we can keep going with the others. But just for clarification in your message where you said, uh, why would someone want to do business with us? What makes us different? C could you clarify that a bit more? Give me a little bit more context so I can cr create a, a message around that, that specific thing. Okay. All right, great. Okay, so I'm just going to take your dot pens. I'm just going to increase the chat room, the uh, chat window for a bit. So just for everyone who uh, can't see the chat, I realized there were some people who couldn't see the chat before. I'm just making sure everyone knows. So the environmental is, is a sales opportunity and a formalize. The organization is to make a difference to solve important problems. The individual has 20 plus years of experience in project delivery, uh, developing a new business model. Uh, the message is, why would someone want to do business with us? And, and as I mentioned just a moment ago, uh, they work alongside other uh, consultancy firms uh, like Oracle. And then the audience is alliance partners or third party vent vendors. So I typically, I'm going to try and start um, from top to bottom. You don't need to. Again, like I mentioned, it doesn't need to be in order. But I'm going to start from top to bottom so you can follow the script that is written down in the chat. So. For those who want to scroll up a little bit, um, Emru is 62 text it, uh, typed out the, the, the text there. So let me just reflect on this very quickly and I'll just then create a little micro narrative around that. Okay, so it might, it might be something along the lines of, and you know, this is just an example off the top of my head. Um, throughout history, humanity has always come together and thrived because of its ability to communicate and work together. And so over time, all the greatest challenges, whether it's flood or fire or famine in, in the early days of humanity, to the modern day where organizations come together becomes important, now more important than ever. As COVID rushes over the world, our ability to solve problems, to come together, to be unified in our outcome, then becomes a strategic advantage in how we move forward. And so with 20 years experience, we've developed this unique new business model that allows us to bring the best of all our partners to bring something new to the world. Something we feel is important and distinctive, but also adds value, creates engagement, valued partnerships, and more importantly, brings people together. 
if we can do that, then we can really take our message and our product to a new level. The question is, do you want to be part of it or do you want to watch from the side? So that was very quick and it's just off the top of my head. But if you see how I tie through the threads, that becomes then the, the next step in terms of this little process. And in fact, that's the bit I feel that where you, you can bring people together, where you can bring people from the big picture, where are we at, why are we here, down to what does this mean for me? Um, does anybody have any questions about that little process? Yeah, we try and, I was just trying to keep it brief, but I mean, I only had a little bit amount of information. If I had a bit more time, I probably would have unpacked a little bit more what the product is, what the pro idea is, how it, add value, how, it add value, how it adds value to that specific audience, et cetera. But, you know, we're, ju we're just going with text at the moment, so we, we're kind of improvising. Um, so I've got, uh, if anyone else wants to submit, that'd be great. Angela has started to, so I, but I've, I haven't got all the pieces, Angela. So uh, when you, when you get, get that together, um, I'll come back to you. We've got Sean here. What have we got here? Okay, again, I have to increase the size of the window of the chat. One moment. Okay. Uh, so we've got uh, audience. I'm just going to read this out so everyone knows. Uh, audience is high school girls struggling with self esteem and confidence, parents of high school girls who want to provide their girls tools. Uh, the message is you're better than you think you are. Failure is a step in achieving progress. Whoops. The, Someone just put something in chat, just zoomed up my uh, chat. Um, failure is a step in achieving success. Uh, mother of a teen daughter is the individual, witnessed 20 years of uh, lacking confidence, uh, impact, success, and opportunities. Uh, the organization helps girls to develop self love and confidence and help girls become better versions of self. And the environment is a mobile app and social networking. So, let me think about this one a little bit, Sean. And then I So I'm going to do this one a little bit out of order, Sean. Um, just let me just have a think about how I want to slot in one more piece. Um, Okay, so it might, it might start something with something that's familiar with everyone. So it might be something mm -hmm. of, uh, when you see the power of Michelle Obama, what do you see? But did you also know that she had her own struggles, her own challenges, her own demons to face? And I think everyone does. And it, that's, that's life. And the value in getting somewhere from A to B is not that it happens instantly is because we earn it along the way, we experience along the way. I mean, how many people in this world have a perfect life? Success is built on small steps. Small steps require small risks. Small risks sometimes require some failures. Now, I know that sounds like a lesson, but what we're really, really wanting you to understand is that we build our muscles slowly. We build our capabilities over time. What if we could help you understand that better? What if we could help you achieve more? What if we could give you something to build on? There's not only a logical skill, but a life skill. We've created a mobile app that gets you to connect with each other, with yourselves, gives you insights, objective, independent, outside, Take a look, see what you think. If it adds value, we'd love you to become more part of it. We really believe 
that this can make a difference. And I guess the only opportunity is whether you're going to download it or not. It's up to you. So I tried to be a little bit more um, personal with that one. In on reflection, I probably might have added, depending on the audience, um, you know, maybe you don't want to go to your teacher, maybe you don't want to go to your parent, like giving them some reasons why an app would be more appropriate versus, I don't know, some other option that they're thinking. Uh, and that's not to discount other options, but in your case, we're trying to promote this app. Um, and we're, we're trying, to, trying to work from the, from the girl's point of view. Now, I realise I have a limited scope there, so hopefully I'm on track around what's going on through their mind in terms of self-esteem and self-confidence. Um, if you want to build in your own personal story, I think that's really, really valuable. And maybe a little anecdote around that is really, really valuable. Obviously, I don't have your particular anecdote, but... Um, I mean, if I was to build my own personal anecdote, I, I'm in IT, I'm a geek, I'm incredibly shy, even though it doesn't, you know, it might not seem like it. Now, I, I didn't speak to anyone, to be honest. And one of the reasons actually I created this tool was to get over my own shyness. I needed a consistent way to cover certain things off to go, oh, I forgot to say that when I've left the room. But also know that it had an impact with someone as I said it. And so I actually created this to help my own needs that just happened to be useful for other things, in this case, storytelling. And so, um, you know, that might be an element you might want to build in. And so what we've all, all often got to do is rather than think about the message we're going to share, we need to think about the visceral experience people are having as we are saying it. So, you know, you don't want to launch into your lesson or your message right up front. You want them to understand that you understand. You don't want to lecture someone uh, unless you establish your credibility or your experience and your background. So these then become critical factors in terms of how people perceive your message as you are saying the message. So, um, so Sean, hopefully that was useful to you. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> sorry, I just scrolled down and saw your message. Um, so I'm just scrolling around. I just saw Angela again. I will come back to you. Um, I'm just making sure I haven't missed anyone. Uh, I'm just checking a question here. So if we're creating a message from for the company and brand, this is Sid's message, uh, how do we include the individual in the branding when there are many stakeholders? Yeah, that's really good. Uh, sorry. Uh, so also, Fatima, in terms of having trouble hearing you, I'm not sure whether that's just audio breaking up, in which case it's my internet or something else. but. Uh, let me know. So Sid, with the individual, it could just literally just be an offhand comment. So it's like, it might be something. So if I just gave my example just a moment ago, um, around the um, trying to get a conversation with the senior executive, it, it wasn't, you know, back in the day, I was trying to convince someone that Y2K was a thing. Actually, I'll, I'll choose a different one because that was an individual one. Let's, let's choose something where we're representing a brand. Let me see if I can think of a personal example. Actually, so, so for those who don't know, I'm the licensee for TEDx Melbourne. I've been doing that since 2009. So I'll give a context, an example based on that. So at the moment, um, TEDx Melbourne is going through a, a virtualization stage. We're moving from real events to virtual events. So it might be something along the lines of today, a wash, we're a wash with lots of virtual experiences. And we can literally get something 24 seven if we really wanted to. So TEDx Melbourne created a differentiator to make sure that we weren't just talking heads. We created art classes. We created meaningful conversations with people about what's important to them. And so it became less about our message and more about what's important to the audience. Now, that wasn't by accident. It was because I had a certain need. I was feeling isolated. I felt I needed to connect. And I knew there were important messages that, that, that people wanted to share and have deep conversations. And so that's why we created the virtual circles that allow us to have intimate moments at scale on a regular basis. Because more than ever, people need people. People need connection. People need engagement. And people need to be heard. And so the circles are designed to do that. And hopefully, they're helpful to you too. 
So it's about how you weave the position, Sid. Uh, it might be a single sentence, it might be a narrative, something a bit longer, but I guess you need to be selective dependent on a few things. First of all, how much time there is, uh, how clear the message needs to be. I mean, it can't be a distraction. Um, and then when it comes to the stakeholders, I try and be as broad as possible unless I know specific incidences around individual stakeholders. So I might go, such and such, I know you've experienced this, and then you draw them in. Or if three or four people kind of had go through one scenario, it's like, well, there's a number of people who've gone through this particular scenario. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So I try and build my narrative with their meaning, with the meaning they're creating for that interaction. And hopefully that brings them in. Uh, stakeholder analysis is actually a whole separate topic that I typically do a whole separate conversation around because there's things like um, political, structural and social factors. So political, uh, structural is basically whether they're boss or not or in charge or not, and whether you need to give them due respect, quote unquote. Uh, political is they might not be in charge, but they might have the minds, hearts and minds of the people that they represent. And social is your personal experience with that individual, how they like information to come to them, what's their decision criteria, how they influence, who are their influences, those sorts of things. Um, we also need to factor in things like, are they big picture? Do they just want the concept or do they want every single detail? Like there's a number of different factors with stakeholder and stakeholder engagement, which is much more detailed, which we don't really have time to go into today that I would also factor in. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, Okay, wow, there's lots of conversation. So I'm just trying to make sure everyone. So yes, I apologize for the internet going in and out. I really can't do terribly much about that. Okay, uh, let's come back to Angela. I know she's had a several uh, attempts to write something down. Um, so audience is anyone collecting art and design objects uh, in their twenties? Uh, individuals personalizing artists creative website. Okay, so okay, so I imagine that's the product. Uh, why? Broadening audiences to international audience. That makes sense. Environment, personal artist website, social media platforms. Okay. Uh, using email message, messaging to connect. Uh, the message is artist statement and bio communicating artist practice and research. Heavy use on uh, images of practice convey in uh, visual message. The organization is an individual personal website for art and practice. So Angela, if we had more time, and unfortunately we don't, but I would probably get a little bit more clarity, A, for each of the sections, but also sort of hear your story a little bit more. Now, um, it, it's clear that you're, you're probably more uh, uh, not a writing person, and that is actually more normal than not for artists. They have much more visceral uh, modalities, particularly visual ones, uh, in which case you communicate slightly differently. So you know, this exercise typically would be done verbally and we'd have the opportunity to unpack that in a more specific way. Um, the why of broadening audiences is one part, but the why in terms of why they should care is another thing I, I really need to know a little bit more before I can create a clear narrative. Um, is this art for art's sake? Is this art for meaning? Is this art for a particular style or genre? Is this, um, if you can give me a little bit more, I'll try and come back to you. But without that, it's hard to create a clear message. And without a clear message, it, it's harder to hit home. Uh, it then becomes a general message. And general messages gen become, tend to get a bit lost in the, um, in the noise. And you did mention in here heavy use of images. Um, so I, I, I realize that this is a little bit harder medium to communicate with, so I apologize for that. Um, I might just come to Fatima, who's sort of been a little bit uh, clearer on that. Uh, maybe a little bit short, but we'll see what we've got. Uh, so audiences, people who want to buy retail products from persons of color own businesses. So that's great, because that's a cause that people can relate to. And so if you can get an idea that people relate to, then it's less about what you're producing and more about the, the relationship you wanna create. So that's another element that I would probably get everyone to think about. Message is supporting local uh, per persons of color, own businesses to uplift their voices in their businesses. The individual is, you're an ex individual designer, experienced uh, designer and social justice advocate. 
The organization is a, is a marketplace to sell products from small and medium businesses, owner operators, and the environment is e-commerce. So it might be um, something, and we're running out of time, so I'll, I'll, I'm just trying to try and get through as many people as possible. Uh, it might be something along the lines of, um, actually, Phantom, if you can also add what sort of retail products, are these specific to target audience to the broad community or specific to the people of color uh, audience as the buyers? Apparel for everyone. Okay. Okay, so it might be something along the lines of people are unique. People want to distinguish themselves. People want to have something that represents themselves. And what better place to start than where diversity is the start rather than the end point. We've created a platform for persons of colour to not only share their businesses, but to show their variety. Let's celebrate their backgrounds. Let's celebrate their differences. Let's make sure that we have something distinctive for ourselves from these unique communities. We believe we're creating the world's first or the most or whatever verb you want to add in there platform for people of color. If you want to be distinctive, come to the broadest market you'll ever see. I think you'll be surprised. And I might just leave it at that. So, you know, it's something a little bit um, more uh, unique. So if, if, if the play is unique people, then the play needs to be unique products and services. Um, and so differentiated then becomes part of that brand position. And so the position then becomes important. So I might sort of add before we finish up here that the position you take people, the position where they are and getting them to acknowledge that they're there and the position you take them to is the journey that you want them to have at the end of the story. And so you need to be very clear about where you start and where you end. It's like a map. If I gave you a random map of a random location of a place you'd never been to, that would be difficult. Especially if I said you need to get to this end point because you don't know where the starting point is. So being clear about where you start and being clear about where you end is the important piece for storytelling. And so that's why I'm saying, if it's not clear in your mind where you start, you can never take them to somewhere else. And so these then become other elements that we factor in in terms of this model so that you're having an understanding around that. Um, thanks, Sophia and uh, Fatima. Are there any other questions um, uh, around this in terms of, uh, the model itself. I'm just learning some, some things here. Uh, uh, yes, it is being recorded. Um, it will be available. Um, the Girls in Tech crew will follow up and give you options for access to that. Um, So Mia asked, is there additional places to read and learn about this? So uh, I've broken up into much more detail on my LinkedIn profile. So if you search John Yeo, J-O-N-Y-E-O, -E and TEDx Melbourne, uh, I might type, type that in the chat so you have that. Um, I have put some, some of this content onto, into LinkedIn articles. I've broken it up a little bit more, so you'd have to kind of unpack it a little bit more. But then you can kind of get the more detail about what I'm talking about and, and see where you're finding out. Um, you can also connect with me there, although I do make one request if you request, uh, if you do request. Um, put that you saw this webinar in the note for the connection request. And the reason I do that is that I get lot, I don't check my LinkedIn every day, and I might come back and see 30, 40, uh, you know, requests and pretty much all of them don't have a reason why they're connecting. And if I don't have a context, then I can't understand why you're connecting. I don't, 
I'm not the type of person to just connect with everyone on LinkedIn uh, because for me, it's a place where I can connect with peers and like-minded people. And I, I don't want random people. And I've noticed when I select random people, 99.9% .9 of the time, they try and sell me something. And I, that's not what I, I just don't want that. So um, I am very, very specific about who I accept into the connection. So just be clear about that. I'm just being clear about that. Just please don't be offended if I've ignored you. That's the reason. Um, but LinkedIn, if you want to see more articles and much more detail about that, uh, appropriate length. So appropriate length, that's a really good question, Carla. So appropriate length, sometimes that's not, sometimes you get to choose that, sometimes you don't. So uh, if you have a meeting, you know how long the meeting is. Um, the, the cheeky answer is as long as it needs to be to create the strong position and the disproportionate amount of attention. Now that can literally be 30 seconds. Now, um, I would rather an amazing story that has an impact than a drawn out one that just bores people or frustrates people, confuses people, whatever. So the answer is as long as it needs to be. Um, if I was to create a short narrative like I do, I try and keep it below you know, two minutes, ideally 90 seconds. And the reason is if you meet a complete stranger and start a story in a semi-random or semi-formal or even a formal scenario, they'll politely give you about two minutes before they'll, their brain starts to go off on tangents. And this is just a psychological thing. So try and keep it brief. Now, if you have an all-day workshop or a one-hour presentation, try and break it down into smaller chunks and, and, and achieve the same thing, strong position, disproportionate amount of attention. Because otherwise it just turns into a lecture or there's a boring bit in the middle that they'll just go off on some sort of tangent and then you lose people. And then obviously, especially in virtual, it's easy to lose people. Um, any other questions? Because I want to make sure we're answering some of these questions. Angela, maybe if you like, we can connect and have a bit more of a conversation. Um, that will probably help the verbal side of it. So let's try that. Um, anything else around the model? Uh, thank you for the feedback, by the way. Um, so if you want to find out more about any more programs at Golden Tech running, a little bit more about me. Obviously, LinkedIn is one way to do it. But info at Girls in Tech is a way that you can connect with the programs overall. What are offering? What else do I offer? We do plan deeper, more involved conversations around this model and other models. So stay in touch with info at Girls in Tech. Make sure that you are aware of that because, you know, we will plan those. I don't know if they'll be this year. We'll see what's going on. If there's enough demand, we'll definitely do it. But um, what we're trying to do is really build a cache of stuff that's valuable to people now that they can take forward. And then, you know, if there's interest in taking things further, and of course, we'll have that conversation. Um, that's all I really wanted to cover today. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your interaction. Uh, the chat has been thoroughly amazing. Um, this is recorded, so you can go watch it again. But for those, uh, for, for uh, everyone, thank you for your time. Have a good rest of the day and hopefully see you all soon.